Scotland is famous for its whisky, but the boom in beer and home-brewed booze has provided a surge in sales across other alcoholic sectors. So, Ivy Times UK decided to come down to BrewDog's new London store to get the lowdown on the sector. We're talking about beer, of course, Scotland is famous for its whisky, but can you tell us a bit about the beer industry and, of course, the growth of BrewDog? Uh, well, obviously we've been going for for about four years now, I mean the bar side of things, seven years with the brewery, and when we started it was you know, still very traditional, um, and we kind of opened the floodgates for a lot of other interesting breweries, and the people in Scotland just seem to react to that, buying a lot of beer, and we've seen some other interesting breweries coming along recently, you know, um, so I think things are really positive and, and continue to rise. Um, so looking good for the beer industry in Scotland, I think. And in terms of the products or uh, types of beer, are there any certain ones that are becoming really popular or um, if there's any kind of on the home brewing side, any um, rise in popularity from that? Uh, well, obviously, like IPA has been massive for the last number of years. Like, our punk IPA is our flagship beer and we're very proud of that. Um, things like Dead Pony Club is, you know, is a, is a lighter option. You know, with the summer coming in, that just flies off the shelves. Um, so that's really popular. And I think tastes are always changing. So you see, like a lot of Belgian styles coming through with guys like Brew by Number and Partisan doing like interesting saisons and um, taking other European styles and recycling that through a kind of British filter and, and making some really interesting beers. So I think like saisons and wits will be the, the kind of big hit this summer, I think. And you've only just opened up this new shop here, Bottle Dog, in uh, Grays and Lane in London. So um, why now? Why open up a shop right now? Are you, is there been a boom in the market or appetite for this kind of product? Well, we thought there was a, a slight gap in the market. There is some excellent um, you know, beer shops and most of them do beer and wine. Um, a couple of exceptions that specialise in beer, but they're all very, um, you know, kind of in far away areas, so there'll be, you know, a bit of a commute from one end of the city to the other. So the chance to open a central one just made it easily available to a lot more people, um, and, you know, our prices are a bit lower, and we get to spend more time with people as they come in, making it accessible and making it, you know, a, a very friendly, informal atmosphere to come in and, and, and talk about beer. And we hope to continue that with the, the homebrew side of things, you know, and, and that's one thing that surprisingly for London, a city so huge, there isn't any homebrew shops in the whole city. Um, so we are hoping to, you know, take feedback from the customers as they come and, and build that part of the business and encourage people to, to really dive in and, and understand beer and, and brew their own. You guys are um, Scotland's largest independent brewery and you just opened up a shop in London. So. Are there any concerns over the referendum later this year? Uh, not so much. I mean, we'll continue to make the great beer that we make, and I, you know, I think people will, will buy that and drink that, whether it's a, a yes or no come September. So, yeah, that doesn't really affect us too much, I don't think. And going forward, I mean, you've expanded here in London. Are there any maybe uh, key cities across the world that you're thinking of launch launching it? Yeah, well, we've launched our bars internationally, um, and you know we're quite keen to do more of that. So we've, we've opened Tokyo and Sao Paulo this year. Um, we've got uh, we've got one in Sweden. We're open to look uh, to open another one in Gothenburg, and I think the. The general rule with Brewdog is always to take as much great beer to as much of the world as possible. So I would imagine um, if hopefully this one is a very successful business, then we'll, we'll look to take that model as far and wide as we possibly can. Especially for the Scottish alcohol industry, Japan and um, other parts of Asia have actually have a massive appetite for these kind of products. Are there any views in terms of uh, going over there maybe? Yeah, well, as I say, we have opened a bar in Tokyo and, and we sell a lot of our product there, I think. For some reason, I don't know, there's a kind of romanticism uh, in Asia towards, towards Scotland and, um, and that's been a very good market for us and, and you know, the Japanese people are you know, people that we're very fond of and we hope that uh, we can continue to grow that section of our business. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much.